М1 Global presents. Уважаемые поклонники смешных единоборств, представляем ваше внимание. Супербой весовой категории до 84 килограммов. Ну, я за полтора месяца до боя я узнал, что ну, буду выступать. Мне сказали, как бы, заранее. Я готовился, бегал, там, бронежилете, там, противогазы. Соперник у меня неплохой, на самом деле. Всех своих соперников я уважаю. Хочу пожелать удачи. Забой узнал где-то неделю назад, поэтому особо никакой тактики уже не успел я работать. Соперника своего знаю давно, очень сильный ударник. Я постараюсь с ним бороться, навязать свою борьбу и бороться с ним. Knows Christina from a long time ago. Obviously, he knows that he's in this ring. The striker is going to try and wrestle with him. This is something that surprised me every time that there are so many fighters that take on fights on short notice. Uh, is it due to the fact that the uh, original opponent has an injury, or uh, what can be the reason? For sure. Well, at, at this level, really, at, the, at this level, so many things can happen. When you know, when there's a six-week training camp and they're training as intensively as they do because they have to train intensively in order to, you know, to be able to be completely prepared. Uh, they, um, there's going to be injuries. You know, for sure there's going to be injuries. There's going to be injuries from the sparring, from the grappling, from the striking. There's going to be little cuts. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of pulls and... Um, you know, bruising, etc. There's going to be issues from the cardio, from the constant running. So it's very, very common at this level to see injuries, and you know, they often, um, in a in an event, you know, 20, 30 percent of fights are either changed or completely cancelled or postponed because one of the fighters or both of the fighters get injured. So uh, I believe in this case, there was um, the original opponent was injured for Gusano. And then a replacement was very difficult to find with Bomenko stepping up. Uh, Gusano has a, you know, has a reputation of being someone who's, when he's winning, when he, when he feels confident, he's unbeastable. And um, uh, you know, we've seen him have almost one of the best knockouts of 2011 against Tyson Jeffries in the US live on Showtime. Of course, that that spinning back fist, which you know touched Tyson, maybe by one or two centimeters on his chin and Tyson's out for a couple of minutes. Uh, his heel hook of Eddie Arisbendi, um, Gusenov really, you know, a fighter that people uh, are wary of. Um, so Fomenko was, you know, was very brave in taking this fight. Yeah, but uh, he will be in there for a surprise because uh, Gusenov is a national uh, kickboxing champion also yeah. next to him. Uh, an Asian mixed fight champion, so yeah. he's yeah. Well, very well rounded. Yeah, Gusano is very well rounded. Now, Fomenko is the winner of the World Pancration Cup and also is the runner up in World Combat Sambo. Uh, so, of course, he's experienced, but Gusano comes in, he is Asian mixed fight champion in 2009, he's the World Ukado champion in 2008, a regional champion of South Russian Combat Sambo, national kickboxer champion in 2006, which was a while ago. However, it's still a big achievement. He's a very entertaining striker, uh, really that KO, if you haven't seen it, check out the KO of uh, Tyson Jeffries, Arthur Gusena versus Tyson Jeffries, live on Showtime in the US in 2011. Uh, so they can find it on YouTube. Uh. Yeah, for sure. We, um, you know, as we mentioned, Gusena in his previous fight just had a terrible showing against Myron Miranda. Either there was something wrong with his training camp, he was sick beforehand or something, he really... Uh, you know, he, he tried to win that fight during the first minute, minute and a half of the first round. And then after that, Miranda just slowly took over and um, uh, 
exhausted him and got Gustino to the point where he didn't want to come out for the third round. His team made him come out. Uh, and then Miranda you know, took an, an easy one in the third round against Gustino. So now Gustino is making his comeback, much like Weichel earlier on in, in the first fight of, of, of tonight. He has, to, he has to win this fight in order to win. Gain the favorite amount of yeah. crowd again, and and also everyone. Good. He has to come back for that. But he can't. Um, you know, he can't afford to, to, to lose this fight. And he, you know, the last defeat that he had was not the defeat that you would like to no, have on your no, it's not, it's not, not in front of the the organization, not in front of the fans. Now, Gusenov is you know if you see him, is um, is not the most muscular athlete. He's not the longest athlete. He's, you know, he he kind of he's a little bit a little bit chubby looking. He, um, uh, you know, he doesn't look like such a scary fighter for sure. He doesn't look like you know the kinds of scary fighters that we see coming out of the US. He doesn't have a mohawk. He's not all tattooed everywhere. He's not heavily muscled. I think that he is one of the guys that can cut down and weight. 20, 27 kilograms, 27 years old for for Gustino versus 26 for Fomenko, 178 to 180, 83.8, 81.2. Gustino slightly heavier. Both guys have 10 wins. Fomenko has seven losses. Gustino has three losses. So. Experience on the side of Fomenko, a better record on the side of Gusenov. And yeah, I think for sure Gusenov could probably cut down easily to welterweight. Yeah, I think so. If you look at his weight, at the, uh, the, the, his build, and it's uh, he, according to me, he didn't cut weight at all. Yeah, I don't think he cuts weight. Uh, but despite the fact of how he looks, um, wait till this guy, wait till the bell goes, wait till this guy is actually fighting. He's to watch when he's on his game one of the most exciting fighters in Europe one of the most exciting fighters in the world and you know for sure one of the most exciting fighters in M1 oh yeah this is the bell and there first right kick to the body right kick to the inside of the leg as Fomenko takes him down and starts to work from the top position and this was really you know as Fomenko mentioned in the pre-fight interview this was his intention he probably didn't think he had a chance to trade with Gusenov on the feet but to get him on the ground to, to perhaps tie him out was was his game plan as Gusenov ties him up wanting for the referee to stand this fight up again and, and that's managed, exactly so what happens Kislev stands the fight up it's a, a, a very straightforward tactic from Gusenov as he hits around, that around, and that was the, and that's it. That was, and that's <laughs> it. That was a spinning back kick. A spinning back kick, I believe, to the liver. Yeah, it looked like Fomenko is in a whole lot of a whole lot of pain. This is one of the most beautiful techniques to, to see a fighter goes down because um, what I like about it is that you can't fake anything. You yeah. go down, and after a few minutes, you're okay again. In the, yeah. Contrary to a knockout uh, on the head, sure. this is a, a knockout on the body, and the fighter goes home a little disappointed, and not not a little, a lot of disappointment, of course. But he'll recover. In ten minutes, he'll be okay. Sure, sure. That's really uh, as the doctor was called in to look at Flamenco. That's one of the hardest strikes in in any combat sport in mixed martial arts because as we know the, um, uh, the heel of the foot is, is the biggest round bone um, in the human body and when 50 sec 55 seconds of the first round via KO with a liver kick Arthur Gusenov takes the win over Evgeny Fomenko and you know as we see Fomenko is actually um, is actually not not damaged at all. With Natalia Vorobyova, who is a little damaged. His ego is a little damaged. Natalia Vorobyova, who is Olympic, Olympic champion in freestyle wrestling, is. Um, Fedor 
Большое спасибо всем землякам, всем, что пришли сюда. Дай Аллах всем здоровья, чтобы Ишалла был Аллах с нами. Аллах Акбар! Победой! Спасибо!